Hey everyone, Path here, and in this video, we will be discussing some quantum states that cannot be described using a wave function. We'll briefly go over what a wave function actually is and why it works for certain quantum states and why it doesn't work for others. And as always, we'll be trying to keep the mathematics as simple as possible. So if you enjoyed this video, then please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. Let's start by understanding that a wave function can be thought of as a mathematical function that contains all of the information that we know about the system we happen to be studying. The example I always like to give is that if we're studying a single electron, that's our system, then the wave function contains information about things like how likely we are to find that electron at different points in space, and so on. For a more detailed look at wave functions, please do check out my quantum mechanics playlist linked below. But let's now imagine that we want to write our wave function for this single electron in terms of the spin states of this electron. Now spin is a property that electrons can have, just like mass or charge, but it's a rather more complicated and interesting property. An electron can be found in one of two spin states. These are usually called spin up and spin down. So if our electron happens to be in the spin up state when we measure its spin, then its wave function can be written like this. This is representing the spin up state. And of course, we commonly use the Greek letter psi to represent the wave function. And if we know that our electron is in the spin down state, then we can write its wave function like this. And in quantum mechanics, our particle can also be in a superposition, a sort of blend of the two spin states in this case, before we make a measurement on it. This is expressed mathematically as a sum of the spin up and spin down states, because we're saying that it's in a combination of the two. And the numbers in front of each state are just there to make sure that the probability of finding the electron in either the spin up or the spin down state is one, because those are the only two possible spin states that our electron can have. So these are different ways in which we can write the wave function of our electron depending on its spin state. We can write it as spin up or as spin down or as some combination of the two. All of these wave functions that we've written here are representing what are known as pure quantum states, and they can be written as a single wave function. But let's now take a look at another kind of quantum state, a mixed state. In my opinion, the easiest way to do this is to contrast a pure state and a mixed state. This pure state, for example, we saw earlier represents a superposition, a sort of blend of the spin up and the spin down state. But to understand a mixed state, let's imagine we don't have enough information about our system. And we just know that our electron could be in one of many different pure states. For example, let's say that the only thing we know about our electron is that it could be in this state, or it could be in this state, or it could be in this state. We don't know exactly which one it's in because we perhaps don't have access to that information, but we might know the likelihood with which we'll find our electron in one of these particular states. Well, if our system is like this, where we don't know which psi state it's in, we just know the probabilities of it being in particular psi states, then we call this a mixed state. Now, these probabilities are purely because of our lack of knowledge about the system. We don't know this information, perhaps we don't have access to it. They're fundamentally different to the quantum probabilities that arise because of superposition, say. When we measure a system in a superposed state, it collapses into one possibility. And hence, before measurement, this is literally all the information that can be known, not just all the information that we do know. It's not a lack of knowledge causing this issue. Now, here's the thing. We can easily think about an electron in any one of these pure states when we're doing some mathematics and talking theoretically. But in real life, in practice, things are a little bit different. Maybe we have an electron source that spits out electrons in different psi states. In other words, only some of them come out as spin up, only some of them come out as spin down, and some of them come out as a superposition of the two. We figure this out about the source by making lots of different measurements and we work out the likelihood with which a particular electron will be in a particular psi state. But unfortunately, because of the nature of the source, we can't know which electron will be in which state beforehand. Well, this is an example of a situation where mixed states are really useful. Now, when dealing with a mixed state, we need to represent it with what's known as a density operator or a density matrix. Now, before we continue here, I do want to mention that if you're familiar with the mathematics of quantum mechanics, like Brown Kett notation and operator algebra, then please do go check out Professor M. Does Science's video on this topic. It covers it in its full mathematical glory and in my opinion, explains it really, really well. But what we will do here is to consider a really basic example of a density matrix. All you need to know is a little bit of vector and matrix algebra. Instead of using bra and ket notation to represent our particle's possible spin states, we will now use vectors. We'll say that if a particle is in the spin up state, 
then it's represented by this vector here. And if it's in the spin down state, then it's represented by this vector here. Basically, the top number represents how much of our system is in the spin up state and the bottom number represents the spin down state. So if we want to write a system in a superposition of spin up and spin down, like this one from earlier, then the vector representation would look like this. And again, the one over square root twos are just there to make sure that the probability of finding our electron in one of these states is one. Now, this is a pure state, remember, because we can represent it with just a single wave function or a single vector. Now, it turns out that we can find a density matrix for a pure state as well. In other words, density matrices can be used to represent pure states as well as mixed states, but single wave functions or single vectors can only be used to represent pure states. So the way to find the density matrix for, say, this particular pure state is to take the column vector, turn it into a row vector, and then multiply them together. If you're familiar with matrix algebra, then you'll realize that this gives us a matrix. This is the density matrix that represents this pure state. Now, for mixed states, remember that's one where our knowledge of the system is limited, so it could be in one of multiple psi states. We actually have to add up the density matrices of each possible psi state whilst making sure that we weight it with the probability of it being in that psi state. And that gives us this final density matrix. And this is the mixture in the mixed state. And it's for this reason that there is no way to write a mixed state as a single wave function or a single vector. We have to deal with the matrices that represent the different pure states in which our system could be. And each one of these density matrices has to be weighted by how likely it is that our system is in that pure state. Mixed states come about in practice quite a lot. Pure states are mathematically convenient and easy to work with. But in reality, it's difficult to create a system of pure states. And that is when the mathematics of mixed states comes in handy. And with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Hit that bell button if you'd like to be notified whenever I upload. And please do check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support me on there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.